Well, I got this computer years ago. Somebody left it outside at an outdoor flea market. I was leaving. And <clears throat> I decided to get it. That was probably around the year 2000. Um, been in my storage building ever since. I, I first got it, I plugged it up. I remember it powered on. But I just cleaned it up, plugged it in. I'm going to see if it still works after being in storage for years. It's the Radio Shack TRS-80. Okay, I just flipped the switch. And I hit that button. And it's powered on. Don't know how well you can see that. Turn the light off. Okay, I took a TRS-80 Model 3. The keyboard wasn't working, so I desoldered all the keys. And the way they work, they got a little... Uh, they got these little tabs, basically, that you push in. Or you don't push them in, you actually... I wedge a screwdriver up under that. Let me see. I don't have enough hands. But, uh... I couldn't find no information on this, but let me see if I can see what I'm doing here. Basically, you take a screwdriver and put it right here and pry up under there and pop this off on both sides, opposite side of each other. It's real thin. I'll show you here. On one, I'm going to have to take apart. Um, that I'm not done yet. You just pop that under there. And then it comes up that way. And you flip it around. Do the same thing on this side. It's hard to do this like this down to where I'm showing the camera. But. There it comes. When you take it apart, what you got to be concerned with is a little spring there rolled out. But here's this little spring that goes over the rubber dome here that's got your uh, rubber black material that makes a connection it makes connection with this and while that may look fairly clean I use metal glow and clean that off as you can see and it the q-tips come off black you know it gets quite a bit of tarnish off and the buttons test you know on the multimeter the one that ones I've cleaned the, you know I set it to ohms Set the multimeter to 200 ohms. Before I clean a button, this one's not been clean. Pushing a button, the ohmmeter don't move when I've got the leads connected here on the on that part. But when I do the one that I've cleaned, I put the legs. You can see it pops right up to, you know, usually average around 70, 80, sometimes they go up to 100. Uh, and it keeps dropping the longer you hold it. But you let off of the button. So, as you can see, the old button that I've not cleaned yet. Doing the same exact thing shows nothing. So, anyway, stuff is this stuff is 
the information is pretty scarce out there on how to fix this stuff. There's the one I cleaned again. Right now I've got four cleaned. That's coming up. Um, highest one is like a hundred and some ohms or something. Uh, I like it when I get them to start off at you know around seventy or eighty ohms, but uh, you know they wouldn't do anything starting off. It wasn't showing no ohms, so it was so. I mean, it just wasn't making any connection, I guess. But there's the the uh, disassembled uh, components there. They basically f really five separate pieces when you take the spring off. But uh, I recommend using Q-tip metal glow. I've heard pencil erasers work, but I don't have a pencil. I'm with a good eraser on it right now, unbelievably so. I'm using metal glow and Q-tips, and metal glow's always been good to me on fix on cleaning cartridges and stuff. Now, what does worry me is I've got some of the uh, traces that I can see right here. When I was desoldering them, they some of the legs on the on the uh, key mechanism here is bent, and you have to bend them up, and that caused me to damage the trace on on some of these, which worries me. Uh, you can see, uh, so I'm going to have to take special care when putting this back to, I don't know, make sure that they are connecting good there because this keyboard was really difficult to get apart. I mean, you got this metal thing that these keys, once you desolder them, they snap in on each side. They, so around this metal base, this thing's heavy. And it's a really pain in the butt to uh, get all this taken off. But I, this right here is what made it possible. A little cheap desoldering pump I bought on Amazon. Along with the soldering iron and uh, some capacitors for a LCD TV that I was repairing. I just went ahead and bought a kit like that. But uh, the desoldering pump works, you know, pretty decent for... Uh, for this keyboard because the the uh, holes are just about you know the right size one lock of the solder desoldering pump and it's you know sucks all the solder out pretty much as long as you got it good and hot and put your pump end up close to the while you're soldering you know but uh yeah this is from 1982 I hope I can get the TRS-80 going again Cause it's a you know it's a neat old computer I did get the soldering iron into this so be careful the ribbon I don't think comes off from the board that you have to unplug it from the uh, motherboard side so but luckily I think I avoided the first wire here barely I was busy desoldering and I didn't see that the back of the iron here I'm using the old iron the back of it had got into the freaking ribbon cable so be careful about that well I got the keyboard soldered back up it was quite a job had to done solder each key take them apart clean them but anyway it's working now all the keys I've tested they are all working perfectly three when I put it back together, three wasn't working. I was having trouble with, so I went in and checked the solder points. Got them, got them soldered up. Saw what the problem was, and had them three fixed within just a matter of minutes. But so now I got a TRS Model Three working. Pretty cool. Well, I've got it back together, got the keys put back together, and everything seems to be uh, functioning properly. Uh, it's quite a bit of work, like I said, to unsolder each of those keys, take them apart, use alcohol and metal polish to clean everything real good. Put each key back together, soldered it back in. 
Uh, there's a metal plate under there. It's uh, something I really would not want to do again. But anyway, I've got all the keys working now. So and before they was only like a handful of keys working. So um, even these over here, the seldom used uh, numeric pad over here was wasn't working. It's not a using issue, the amount of use, it's just tarnish builds up over, you know, years and years. This is about 35 years old, so the tarnish, you know, the Q-tips came out black when I cleaned the little bitty contacts inside there, so that was enough to prevent the, uh, you know, circuit from functioning to allow electrical flow when the key was pressed down against it, you know, it didn't it didn't create a connection uh, but anyway this old computer was going to be tossed in the trash uh, somebody left it behind at a flea market years ago and I picked it up and just decided to get it out the other day plug it in see if it's still powered up did but uh, the keys didn't work so I had to get that fixed as you can see it's a 48k model which was really good at the time and the memory I checked it here shows 48,082 uh, bytes uh, and oddly enough to have you know that much memory which that was the top of the line memory at that time for these uh, it didn't have any uh, drives floppy drives so that's kind of strange but anyway I guess they used a cassette it's got a cassette place interface in the back so I guess that's what they done whoever bought this but they paid a lot of money to get the uh, 48k looks like they would have just or maybe they just got what they could find you know maybe these things was probably hard to find at that time but anyway I'm happy to have it going Thanks for watching.